Was that the flash or was that two lesbians falling in love? Hi everyone and welcome to Mike in the Morning. This episode is about passion, specifically how fast lesbians fall in love because it's breakneck speed. You ever know a lesbian? Are they currently living with another lesbian that they met two months ago? <laughs> it's beautiful. And it's it's just so fast. I got my first cavity filled today. Humble brag. And with that, let's go to videotape. I have a huge crush on a girl. And because I'm an absolute useless little lesbian, I developed the crush super quickly and now I know I have to give her time to develop feelings for me as well, but I'm not sure how to put myself in the right position so that she can develop feelings for me too without coming off creepy or like I don't have any feelings for this girl. Please help me, I'm desperate. Okay, look, you're not desperate. You're just a normal lesbian because we're women and we develop feelings really quickly and we read people really easily. Um, you just need to chill, first of all, chill. Uh, don't say anything to her. Don't tell her that you have feelings for her. Show her you have feelings for her. Um, flirt with her a little bit. Is she gay? Is she bi? I need more. I need more. Does she have long hair? Do you have long hair? Does she have short hair? Is this bush on bush? Is this femme on femme? What is this? What are we talking? What's your level of experience? You're a little lesbian? Are you short lesbian? You tall lesbian? You new lesbian? I need more details. But know that you're going to be fine. Every lesbian has been in this position. I've been in this position every single time. See, lesbians fall in love quick. It's fast and it's terrifying. Like a cheetah or those house centipedes. Fuck me. How do you have a thousand legs and not trip? How do you run fast with a thousand legs? Lesbians are not like house centipedes. So pretend I made a different connection. I don't know if you could put yourself in a position where you just wait for the other person to have feelings for you, just go out and have fun. From what I remember of dating, you go out and you hang out as many times as it takes to feel like you want to kiss afterwards. And then once you do that, you're in a different kind of set of circumstances together. So just keep hanging out. Have Go to a different self-serve frozen yogurt place every day until one of your intestines explodes or one of you figures out that you're lactose intolerant or you fall in love and you want to put your mouth on each other instead of frozen tartness which was my favorite vampire weekend song it's not about positioning yourself it's about hanging out until it feels right so do that and that question is actually from a long time ago and i just found it so i'll bet you anything you guys have already looked at couches together. I'll bet you any amount of money that the two people from that last question have at least priced out a couch together. <laughs> uh, here's one about my near-death experience. So let me think of that for a second on my day off. Thank you. When you were having your near-death experiences, did you have a float above the operating table crossing back and forth type of experience? Nah, I wish, but I did have a painkiller experience. They, After a while, they wouldn't give me morphine because it didn't do the trick, so they gave me this crazy other stuff that I always forget the name of. And it was the first time I was like, I would never do intravenous drugs. I'm not a drug person. Um, but it was the first time I got it. Like, I was always like, why the fuck would people want to do drugs? But I, this is the first time I understood. <laughs> uh, I had this still to this day. It's very vivid, man. I had this either dream or like hallucination. I think it was just a regular ass dream, but it was very vivid of, it was me and my mom's mom who passed away a while ago, but we were tight. We we're like best friends. I have her name tattooed on one of my arms, my favorite arm. It's how I remember my favorite arm. <laughs> um, but I had this dream where me and her were walking down a street at sunset in my old neighborhood. And there were just like uh, houses all around and a beautiful sunset sky. And we were pushing a beach ball down the middle of the street 
with a hose uh, with water coming out of it? A couple questions immediately come to mind. First of all, no, we did not have the finger over the top of the hose. It was just bloopy water. You know what I'm saying? When it's just like when it comes out, like it comes out. Like a... um. I don't know, a a good comparison, elephant's trunk. So it was just me and my grandma and we were taking turns with a hose, uh, spraying this thing down the street and it was real fun. And there were families like having cookouts and kids playing on either side. Reminded me of a nice summer day, adolescent summer day. It was very fun. And then I came to and I started telling everyone in my hospital room about my dream and they immediately looked at me like, Maybe we can give him less of whatever that, of whatever whatever that was. I still don't want to do drugs, but that was a nice. That was about as close as I got to an out of body experience. I had an out of room experience, which was great because the hospital room it was like um, it was terrible. So it was nice to be out of there for a little while and to see my grandma and to fuck with a hose, which is I think what we all want. I want to be real clear and I want to say keep. May 29th open on your calendar. I basically moved across the country to be able to perform stand-up comedy at the Laugh Factory. And I've done that a handful of times. And it's been a dream come true ever since. Recently, they put me up on their marquee, their billboard, uh, in front of the, not the billboard, the marquee. It changes. There's a bunch of people on there every night. But they had my face up there and my name when I was hosting one night. And that was a fucking dream come true. And then I've recently been able to talk to them about getting my Friends and Friends crowd work show in there. And that's going to happen on May 29th. And I'm so incredibly excited. But the thing is, I got to fucking sell that place out to stay in good standing with them. And I think that's obvious. So the only two people booked on the show right now are me and my friend Andrew Santino, who is one of the main reasons why I love doing stand-up and love doing crowd work because I was able to watch him do it for so long. And uh, it was always big inspiration for me. So him being on the show is always awesome. Definitely give me your suggestions for who else to ask on the show. Uh, And it's super important that we sell it out. So I'll give you the ticket link just as soon as that's humanly available. We'll put up a nice little graphic to um, highlight that show probably every day for the next month. But come out to that shit. Also, thank you so much to the sponsors of this channel um, for giving five bucks a month to help me do cooler things, to be able to pay people to help me edit videos and to help subtitle the videos and stuff like that. Uh, Awesome and helpful, always making this shit better. Thank you to you for watching it, and I hope that you have, I sounded like I said washing it, but I didn't. You wash it on your own time. Have a great week, and I hope you had a great Easter or Passover or whatever. It's fucking Sunday. We're fucking 420, dude. Fuck 420 plays it. All right. Love you guys. Bye.